Good morning. This is Bill from Out of Europe and Naples, and today marks a new era. I am trying out a new proper video camera, so no more phone call interruptions, no more, uh, well, no more that. <laughs> it's a little bit more modern. Hopefully I don't screw it up. It's bigger, it's bulkier, and uh, I'm having a hell of a time holding it steady, but we'll give it a shot. Uh, and the good news is, to try it out, I have this 1996 Jaguar XJS Cabriolet. Uh, this is an absolutely gorgeous car. This one is finished in, you know, platinum beige outside. It's got uh, ivory leather inside. Uh, it is the final year of production of a car that ran for 21 years, uh, 1975 all the way through 1996. Uh, didn't see that many changes, although the changes it did see were fairly important. Uh, this car had pretty big shoes to fill. It was the successor to the E-Type, uh, which uh, Enzo Ferrari called one of the best-looking cars, maybe the best-looking car he had ever seen. That's pretty high praise from a guy who knows something about the way cars look. Uh, so this thing came after it. Uh, when it came out, it did not have a drop top. That was a pretty shocking thing to Jaguar uh, because uh, that was what uh, their sports cars were all about, was the open top motoring. This was also considered the last of the uh, Lions era Jaguars. The uh, original founder of Jaguar uh, had a little bit of something to do with the development, as did their longtime designer, whose name immediately eludes me. Uh, unfortunately, he died before it was finished, but he did put some touches on the car. Uh, and uh, I guess the public didn't like it because it did run for so long and was a fairly successful model for Jaguar. Uh, that said, they always had money troubles as well, so maybe they just didn't have the dough to come up with a new one. Uh, either way, it is long, it is sleek, it is low, uh, it's got very nice accents everywhere. I think it has just exactly the right amount of chrome on this car. Uh, something that Jaguar is, of course, famous for is, you know, leather, chrome, wood, uh, all of the British stuff that uh, people uh, sort of associate with the brand. That has, to some extent, changed in the modern era. I suppose it had to, uh, as Jaguar became a little bit more, you know, like every other car company out there. Uh, but a lovely chrome trim on the bumpers, the uh, around the taillights. It's got that vintage style uh, pop-up gas cap, the chrome door handles, nice little thin chrome around the bottom of the uh, uh, the windows, the uh, beautiful chrome wrap around windshield, absolutely gorgeous. Uh, they did resist the urge to put chrome wheels on it, so this thing has, uh, you know, some sort of turbo arrow looking things. Uh, beautiful chrome trim around the uh, European headlights in this one, and uh, lovely chrome trim on top of the bumper. Uh, you know, I love the front end of this car, the way it all comes together, uh, sort of down in the middle, up with the lights. Uh, being a 96 in the final incarnation, you can see it has the uh, color-coded bumpers with a uh, lower valence panel with intakes there to keep the brakes cool. Uh, it also, of course, has their, uh, what's the sound of that thing? He's hauling ass. Well, I guess he's in a rush. Uh, anyway, it has the final incarnation of the four-liter six-cylinder, which is a terrific engine for this car. You know, historically, these things uh, did come with 12s, although I guess the E-Type had a lot of sixes, too. And the sixes are considered to be the most maintainable and most reliable, uh, certainly by the average guy. So, uh, you know, this is, again, a semi-reliable Jaguar, and that's about as, you know, good as Jaguar gets, at least from this era. Uh, anyway, you can see everything is absolutely immaculate on this one owner car. Really interesting to see. So well preserved. Uh, always been garaged and looked after. Uh, just absolutely gorgeous. So there's a little opening guy there to get inside the trunk. And you can see a very nicely finished trunk. I've got a bag of crap in here. Uh, I like these little side pockets. You see where it's got the books over there? I've got my bag of junk there. You just stuff them in, then you still get the trunk. Uh, there's a tool kit down there, a full-size spare tire on a matching rim. Nice thing to see. Uh, that's a battery and uh, electronics tower underneath that cover. Also covers the soft top pump. And uh, it's a nice big trunk. If you need golf clubs, you need anvils, you need, you know, boxes of stuff, you're going to be able to fit what you need in there. And that's pretty good for a, uh, for a convertible. You don't get that too much in the modern era, particularly with the uh, folding hardtops. So, nice size trunk there. All right, a couple other little updates for 96, or at least this final facelift model that ran 92 to 96. 
Number one, the hood doesn't have this sort of weird manual pull down anymore, which is quite nice because that bloody thing almost never worked. Uh, the uh, flip side of that is these uh, sort of traditional type hood latches also almost never work. So uh, the, these do, which is nice and again is a testament to just how well this car's been kept. Anyway, there you see a four liter inline six, fantastic engine. Uh, you know, th there really never has been a bad inline six in anything and maybe Jaguar knew that when they uh, put that in this car. Uh, they kind of needed to benefit from a little reliability. Their reputation was pretty iffy. In fact, there's a guy in Naples, famous story. Uh, he, uh, you know, way back in the 80s, might have been 81, 82, he bought two brand new identical red uh, XJS coupes. Uh, reason being, he figured one would pretty much always be in the shop, so he'd be able to drive the other one. And uh, that did work out for him. Most of the time he was driving his Jaguar, only very occasionally were both in the shop. But uh, anyway, by 96, all of that had been worked out. They put in this great motor with a coil unplug uh, ignition with a lot of Bosch electronics. It's mated to a GM four-speed automatic that's absolutely bulletproof. And, uh, you know, underneath the hood of this thing is a fairly simple affair and part of what makes it a pretty reliable Jaguar. Uh, it's not the fastest guy out there. It puts out about, uh, oh, I don't know, 240 horse or so but it's certainly adequate to move this thing down the road and uh, good grand touring style. And of course, that's what this car is about. All right, so to close that, we just lift up a little bit. Down it goes. Now watch this. Right there, watch that, he says. All right, walk around to the other side. <laughs> I was going to do it where it actually clicked down and stayed. Now, if you're at all familiar with these cars, you see the way I just easily closed both sides of the hood. Uh, you can tell from that what a soft and nice life this car has led because so often you're pushing down one side, the other side pops out, you drop it, doesn't latch. Uh, it's a uh, really nightmare affair. So the less molested a car is, the more likely that hood is to work like it did when it was new. And that is the case in this car. So nice stuff. Uh, back here, you see it still has the original soft top cover, which is lovely. I get that question all the time. Does it have the soft top cover? It's soft top cover, and so rarely does it. Uh, those things always get tossed away, so uh, very nice to see the original one in good shape. Uh, you can also see back here, this is a place where the leather often gets desiccated and blown out. Uh, it's all nice, supple, and lovely back here, uh, a testament to the garage keeping this car had. Now, one thing that's really freaking me out is when I got this car, I got a big stack of stuff with it, records, books, uh, window sticker, and we can't find it. I've been, you know, absolutely tearing the showroom apart trying to find it, and uh, I'm killing people over it, absolutely killing them. So, uh, you know, if we don't find it, then <clears throat> probably we won't be in business anymore because you can't run a company with everybody dead. Uh, but uh, hopefully we do find it and people can go on living. Anyway, that said, let's have a look here in the back seats, which are not really suitable for anyone. Uh, flies, again with the flies. Anyway, uh, you can see it's got the embossed uh, Jaguar logo inside the seat backs. That was uh, sort of special to the Diamond Jubilee cars of 95, but they probably just kept it going. Uh, the back seats have lovely beige piping over the ivory leather, uh, beautiful wood and chrome trimmed speaker grills there. Uh, you know, the leg room, <clears throat> well, there's not much you can say about the leg room. I mean, maybe amputees or something, but uh, you could have little kids sitting on your leather. Oh, God, that thought just makes me crazy. Uh, but uh, anyway, you're going to get, uh, you know, somebody back there in a pinch. Certainly Canadians on vacation, you get them to go out to dinner with you. You can stuff them back there. They'll be happy enough. And uh, it does have back seats. Uh, one of the true reasons for that, actually, to have those ludicrous little back seats in this car uh, was in some countries, uh, I believe England in particular, uh, four-seat vehicles had much lower insurance rates than two-seat uh, two vehicles. So by stuffing a couple of back seats in there, down go the insurance rates. 
Okay, you can see beautiful treatment on the door panel, again, with just a tasteful amount of chrome, beautiful wood inlays, lovely stitched uh, leather armrests. Uh, being this last generation, it was great. They added power seats to it, something the American market demanded. Uh, you know, this was a 107 SL competitor, so uh, the 107 SL never did get power seats. That was one way Jaguar was able to distinguish itself. Uh, again, with the lovely chrome around the uh, speaker grill, the sort of contrasting carpet, nice little map pocket down there. Uh, you can tell that was a door panel that was designed in the 60s and sort of updated as it went, and that's part of what gives this 96 model, such a lovely vintage look. Uh, ditto those beautiful big chrome uh, side view mirrors, absolutely gorgeous. Uh, seat in fantastic shape, the leather is just lovely, very little entry wear, again with the embossed leaping cat in the uh, top of the headrest there, and uh, everything just nice. Also nice leather cover on the uh, e-brake on the left side. Now the e-brake works in this thing. Give me a quick lesson in these. So up it comes and then it goes back down again. Now the reason being for that is you don't have to step over a raised e-brake to get in and out of the car. Uh, you know, you could do severe damage to your uh, undercarriage doing that, and I don't mean on the car. So it does slip back down, but people don't sort of intrinsically know how that works. So to release it, you have to pull up again, then push the button, then release, and down it will go. So, uh, you know, that is how the e-brake works on these XJSs. One other quick thing, 92 to 96, the XJ, uh, S became D uh, hyphenated. The S used to be hyphenated on the earlier models, not so on this one. They also updated those taillights to have that big wide uh, look from uh, side to side instead of little guys on the corners. All right, let me find the keys, we'll hop in. I'll get them. Okay, again, one of the beautiful parts of this car is its originality. I mean, this thing is just so untouched. Now here I find I gotta put the camera up against my face to get everything, but eh, we'll go with it. Uh, anyway, you can see this beautiful uh, wood and leather steering wheel, absolutely lovely. Uh, in this facelift version, the uh, uh, dash panel became also burl wood. You can see very nicely laid out gauges. Uh, this thing got two big center vents instead of uh, a weird affair where it had three vents, one straight, two little ones aimable. Uh, that came about on the earlier cars because they were all coupes, so it needed to shoot some air into the back seat. Uh, you can see it also got airbags, so you got left and right airbags in this car, and uh, just absolutely beautiful burl wood everywhere. The wood in Jaguars is just exceptional. Uh, you've got your uh, rear defrost, your fog lamps, your uh, analog clock there. These control the interior lights. Uh, lovely wood and chrome shifter. Uh, you can see down there, that's a uh, rebadged, I can't get out with the key in. Anyway, that's a debadged Alpine, I should say. So uh, Alpine did provide the uh, music for Jaguar in this vintage and uh, works really good. It's fine, it's nice. You also got an automatic climate control that's a little bit mystifying, but works okay. You got your temperature here and your controls over there. Uh, this is called the ski slope on these cars, and for obvious reasons, the uh, wood is sort of shaped like that. And you can see that it's absolutely mint, very unusual. Again, for one of these, they're usually sun-baked, cracked, nasty. Uh, this is your, uh, of course, your uh, cruise control, power windows, the power top control. Uh, this is interesting for the transmission. Uh, sport, neutral, and... Uh, uh, the cross out one. Uh, sport is obvious, and I figure it just does nothing. And the cross out one means that it's going to leave in second gear when you take off from a red light and make it a little bit smoother. Uh, you also get these great uh, dual side ashtrays. They're very historical. They go back many years. Uh, you just got your wipers here. Your mirrors are buried back over there. Uh, you got your headlights on a stalk here, your dimmer control, and uh, some hazard switches down there. So anyway, everything nice and lovely in this car. And actually, before <clears throat> we go for a drive, I think I should probably run this off top so you can see that. Let's see if I can get this guy off real quick. See the way it latches in with all these little hooks there? Uh, it takes about two or three minutes to do this. A little bit more painful than your usual soft top cover, but it does hold really well. It snaps back there. Zips here. Okay, there we go. Get that 
inside. It's one of the few cars we can run the top with the uh, trunk up too. I don't know if that matters or not. Okay, so to run the top, I gotta get the e-brake on again, give it a couple clicks. Let's get the key in the ignition. And uh, up it comes. <laughs> oh, creaky. Uh, very simple, very easy to understand soft top in this car. Uh, you can see those rear windows come up automatically. There's no switches for those. Uh, they just come up with the top. <laughs> These things latch in like so. There's some little clips on the end. Push forward, and you can run your windows up. Okay, so let's have a look around the car now with that. All right, there you can see a beautiful mocha colored soft top. Our antenna's going down. Love that this thing has a true chrome power antenna. Uh, everything just super, well, I'm zoomed in. How the hell am I zoomed in now? How the hell do I unzoom? Oh, there we go. Okay, so it's got this beautiful mocha colored soft top. It's all original. It's in exceptional condition. It's got a glass rear window. Uh, fits very snugly, very nicely, seals well, and adds just the right top hat to this rather handsome British Grand Touring car. See the leaper in the hood there? Uh, I should say the Leaper, that's just the Jaguar logo. A lot of guys pull those out and put in these big uh, uh, leaping cats in the front, which I quite like. Uh, they did make those illegal in England because I guess they were disemboweling pedestrians. So, uh, you know, I don't know. Take that as you will. Anyway, there you go with the top up. Looks really nice. The Jaguar triplex glass, all very lovely. Uh, let's hop in and go for a spin. Now, one thing I noticed when driving this car earlier was that the fuel gauge was acting intermittently, which was just absolutely wonderful. It really made me happy. Uh, and I think that's really weird, a Jaguar with an intermittent fuel gauge. It's just not the kind of thing you're expecting. Anyway, I put in about, I don't know, 40 bucks earlier, so there it goes. Now it's going to climb up again. So obviously there's some issue with the uh, contact on the sender. Uh, I'm sure we can get that sorted before the car gets delivered. Uh, that said, get used to that sort of thing because that's what Jaguar's all about. In fact, I remember uh, doing another, let's get some AC going, God, it's hot in here. Uh, I remember doing another Jaguar a few years ago where we were detailing it, washing it up, you know, everything was nice and lovely. Uh, wash the engine down, then the thing wouldn't start. Oh, that's too loud now. So obviously it had something to do with the engine, you know, so we pulled it into the shop. We're like, you know, God damn it, what's wrong with this thing? We're looking under the hood. We're cleaning out the spark plugs. Uh, you know, everything looked fine, still wouldn't start. Uh, a day later, our mechanic thought to look elsewhere and found out that the fuel pump relay inside the trunk had failed. It had chosen that specific moment uh, after the uh, engine was washed to fail the trunk-based fuel tank relay, so, or sorry, fuel pump relay. And I just thought, you know what, that just encapsulates what a Jaguar is all about. It's just one of those things. It's the mystique, if you will. Anyway, you can see if the minute the fuel gauge is coming up, but the minute we start rolling, that's going to change. And let's go. So nice, big, beautiful, long hood in front of you. And again, that's just sort of the... Uh, uh, the beauty of these big, long E-type XJS Jaguars. They're just big, long, low, and sleek. There we go. I <laughs> get the thumbs up from guys. Uh, you know, everybody loves a Jaguar. They just think you're a real trooper for trying to maintain one and keep it on the road. All right. Oh, I'm sure they just like the look of it. It's not about the maintenance. This thing drives really, really well. Another nice upgrade on this last generation was, uh, you know, Jaguars almost always historically had these disc brakes uh, right up against the differential at the back, which, uh, you know, was something to do with weight or design or, you know, there's some reason they all liked it. But, uh, you know, it was also a miserable way to have to change your brakes. Well, they did properly uh, put these brakes at the outboard of the axles where it's easy to get to. You see our fuel gauge acting intermittently again, so. Aye, aye, aye. 
Anyway, uh, goes down the road beautifully. No vibration from the wheel, no pull from either the uh, steering or the brakes. Look at that, nice, nice proper stopping. Uh, reason for that is we put new calipers on it. And anyway, everything absolutely lovely. So, uh, driving my open top Jaguar, although the top is closed, so I guess I'm not, but uh, I could be heading into work. It's just sort of a lovely vintage way to go. And uh, also feels, uh, you know, modern enough with the airbags, the anti-lock brakes, the modern fuel injected engine under the hood. Uh, you know, like the late model SLs, this is a nice way to have your cake and eat it too. You get a, uh, you know, you get a, a sort of a car that was designed in the 60s and looks very vintage. And at the same time, it's got enough modernity and safety features to make it a great driver. So uh, there it is, 96 Jaguar XJS Cabriolet. Uh, this is a one owner car, 60,000 miles. Uh, absolutely beautiful, lovely to drive. Uh, one of the best ones out there for sure. If you have an interest, give us a call, 239-649-7300, on the web at mercedesexpert.com. Now again, this was the test for the first video camera, so uh, if it goes like crap, eh, we'll go back to the old way tomorrow. Thanks very much for having a look, and we'll see you.